But let's bring in now former Victorian Liberal Party President Michael Kroger and former, La former Labor Minister Graham Richardson. Welcome to you both. Um, look, just before we move on to other topics, Michael Kroger, I know you have a great interest uh, in this topic. You've been a firm friend of Israel, so I'd just like to get your reaction to Penny Wong's speech last night. Well, Sarah, it's hard to know where to start, but, but if she thinks there should be a Palestinian state, go ahead. What's stopping the Albanese government from supporting one, endorsing one? Um, what's she waiting for, if she believes that? But by the way, uh, a Palestinian state, what? But Penny Wong says, oh, here from Australia, we're telling the Palestinians who they can and can't have run their government. I mean, has she asked the Palestinians who they want to run their own government, self-determination, etc.? If there's a Palestinian state, the Palestinians should be free to elect whoever they want to be their government. I mean, Hamas doesn't tell us in Australia the Australian Labor Party are not entitled to run for, for office. So the clear thing is, um, the clear point to Penny Wong is, well, Palestinians should be able to elect whoever they want. And uh, self-determination, a Palestinian state, she's not entitled to dictate to Palestinians who they should and shouldn't elect. So it's farcical at every single level because, as we know, and we've just seen, more than half of the Palestinian populations that have been surveyed support Hamas. They would elect Hamas to be the government of this independent Palestinian state. Yet she says they're not entitled to run. Well, for goodness sake, I mean, Hamas is not like the Liberal Party or the Labor Party where they have membership records and annual general meetings and constitutions. Um, they'll just uh, get through for other people to say, no, we're not Hamas. Uh, we were in Hamas, but we're not any longer to run the, the government there if, if there's a Palestinian state? The answer is this. Of course, there's a two-state solution, but it isn't now. It isn't at a time when the, the majority of the Palestinian voters support Hamas and support the annihilation of the Jewish people throughout, throughout Israel and probably in other parts of the world. This mm. was a disgraceful speech by Wong, an utter disgrace. And for her to be lecturing people uh, about the Middle East, given her, given her comments... She's, she's, she's reinstated funding to UNWA. She calls for a ceasefire without any conditions. Um, she refused to visit Kafar Azar near Oz. I was in mm. Israel when she was. I went to these places. She was sitting in Ramallah and Jerusalem, wouldn't visit them. On and on it goes. She called yeah. for restraint yeah. very early on. This is an extremist government uh, that Albanese and Wong are running on foreign policy and her performance last night was utterly disgraceful. Mm. Richo, is this all about politics? Is this all about Western Sydney seats that Labor's worried about losing and also other seats in Victoria that Labor's worried that they're going to lose to the Greens? Is that what's behind this? Or do you think it's, you know, Penny Wong and Albanese who've, you know, hearkening back to their true activist selves that they've been since university? Look, I, I doubt very much uh, if we're too worried about the Greens picking up these seats. Um, I don't think that's the problem at all. Uh, and uh, I, uh, as far as uh, uh, the, the roots of uh, Albo and, uh, and Penny Wong in their student days, um, I'm not sure how relevant they are today. But I do worry about my own side sometimes, because uh, when it comes to the existence of Israel, there can be no debate. Um, we have a uh, long long since adopted a policy of uh, believing in the existence of the State of Israel and uh, we're not going to change that. As far as I'm concerned, that's an absolute. That's a, that is a basic pillar of our foreign policy and it should stay that way. Uh, it should and yet it's not. Now, let's have a look at some of the other top stories today. The Minns government in New South Wales is considering taxing foreigners more when they buy property in New South Wales. The Treasurer, Daniel Mookie, told the Daily Telegraph that the extra money would go towards building more homes. Have a listen. I want to be confident that foreign investors are helping us build new homes rather than competing for the homes we've already built. Richo, do you think this policy is a good idea? Would it be effective? I think it's a very good idea. I think Mookie's a star, by the way. Um, and uh, I think uh, whenever he comes out, he's always worth listening to. He is a, an extremely clever man. And I think this is, this is very, very good basic policy. What we have to do is look at, our, at, at how we get more homes out there. And I think Mookie's been the, the best we've had in a long time at doing exactly that. 
There, it has been a concern for a long time, so-called ghost houses where they're bought as investment properties by foreigners, uh, Michael Kroger, but then they reportedly sit empty. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I want to say one other thing on, on the equally important topic. Sorry, Shari. Are we going back I to I was Israel at a lunch here? in Melbourne on the... Yeah, we are. We, we are going back. I was at a lunch in Melbourne on the 10th, on the 10th of September, right? Yes. The 10th of September 2001, the day before 9-11. I was at a private lunch in Melbourne of 20 people at Crown Casino with President Clinton. And I asked President Clinton, who, don't, who at that time had only left office eight months before, and he, he'd had the negotiations with Yasser Arafat and mm. Ehud Barak. And I said to Clinton at this lunch, I said, President Clinton, why in the end, given all the lengths you went to, why didn't Yasser Arafat sign the peace deal with Israel? And Clinton said, you know, in the end, I'm not sure he ever wanted peace or that he could ever deliver peace. And that's the problem. Mm. The Palestinian leadership then and now do not want peace with the Jews. They do not want peace with Israel. They have a solution. It's called a one-state solution. It's called to, from the river to the sea. Yeah. And that is the problem, right? Yeah. That's the problem, which is why Wong's call now is so premature and so wrong. Sorry, Shari. Sorry, no, Richo. No, Housing apologize. very important, but <laughs> I, I, I agree my with my I agree with my learned. But I I I would. I if agree I could. with my learned <laughs> friend <laughs> Senator <laughs> Richardson. Um, just on that point, I actually also had a conversation with Bill Clinton the year before in 2000 when he was here, and he said he spoke about how his biggest regret was not being able to get a solution, achieve peace yeah. in the Middle East. And, you know, it's not for want of trying and it's not for the want of Israel not coming to the table either. And, and that's why the tone of Penny Wong last night, you know, she, it, she acts as though oh. the pressure's completely on Israel. Well, Hamas, it, it, they can't it, even get Israel. Hamas to agree to a ceasefire deal. They can't even get Hamas no. to agree to release <laughs> the hostages. The deal's been on the table for some mm. seven weeks now. Mm. A far too generous mm. deal, in my opinion. It's releasing too many Palestinians in return for the hostages. But that is the deal that's been on the table for seven weeks and nothing's happened. All right, let's yeah, get to correct. Some, correct. some other topics. Um, the New South Wales Police Commissioner, Karen Webbs, we've seen this merry-go-round of spin doctors and now yet another, the fifth media advisor she's had, Adam Wallace. The Daily Telegraph revealing that the former media director for New South Wales Health will start in this cursed role tomorrow. Richo, one police commissioner, five media advisors. What does this actually say about Karen Webb? Um, I, I think she must be a very difficult woman to get on with. I mean, you can always understand losing one or two staff, but not one after the other after the other just keeps going. There's got to be some, uh, some problem right at the base of this. And obviously she doesn't know how to fix it. And, uh, I, you know, you, it, it shouldn't be just about spin doctors. I mean, there should be more to life than that. But in this modern age, uh, they've become very important. And what we have to do is try and, and, and move back, in my view, to getting just not spin doctors, but people who actually tell us the truth. I mean, how, how, that'd be nice for a change, wouldn't it? Mm, mm, mm. Uh, absolutely. Um, now, just before we go, final topic. An Indigenous elder has suggested exempting Aboriginal people from land tax, including stamp duty and council rates. Uh, Victorian Premier Jacinta Allen isn't ruling out this idea, but Jacinta Price has slammed it, saying these proposals are outlandish and insulting. These are Jacinta Price's words. She says these separatist policies have failed and were rejected by the Australian people at the referendum. Uh, Michael, what do you think about this? Well, Jacinda's is absolutely right. I mean, this whole notion of, of, of grievance and going back 200 years, uh, I mean, really, this has got to come to an end. It's got to stop. I mean, there's no reason why Aboriginal people shouldn't pay land tax. There's no reason why they should have free university um, courses, uh, subsidised home loans. That was 200 years ago. We're now in the modern era. They've got as much opportunity as uh, as every other person. Um, yes, they come from disadvantaged backgrounds, but there are hundreds of thousands of people in this country who came to this country with absolutely nothing, many of them Jewish after the war, I might add, who are now doing incredibly well through their own, you know, hard work, self-advancement and, 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 you know, um, working hard in the community. You, you, you can't keep, you know, 
people living off these kind of welfare handouts on the basis of what happened 200 years ago. It's, it's, it's not good for them, it's not good for the country, and it's never a good thing to divide this country by race. And this is another example of what, is, what they're trying to do here, and it's the wrong thing to do. Mm. Richo, what's your view on this controversial idea? Every malcontent that we've got wants to be a victim. And frankly, I'm just sick of victimhood. Totally and utterly sick of it. Just get off your ass and do something sensible. Uh, get, like, just get a job, move on, work, try. Um, and I think people have just given up, some of these people. And then what we're supposed to do when they give up is we're supposed to pay for their, their uh, lack of interest in continuing on. Well, I think that's ridiculous. Mm. Right, Graeme Richardson, Michael Kroger, thank you both so much for joining me.